let me start off by talking to you about what a company file is. So any data file in QuickBooks is called a company file. You can have as many company files in QuickBooks as you would like. If you happen to be a bookkeeper, for example, you can have all of your clients in separate company files in QuickBooks. If you wanted to keep your personal information in one and your business information in another, you could certainly do that. They would be separate company files. Company files do not talk to each other, so they're not going to intermix data. You don't have to worry about that. Now, the way this would work is if you already had a company file set up and you just wanted to open it, you would just double click on it from this list. If you didn't see it in this list, you could open it over here on the right, or you can open right here where it says open or restore. And real quick to tell you what the restore option is, we'll be talking in a later module about creating backup files of your company data. If you ever had to use that backup, then you would need to restore it to QuickBooks. You couldn't just open the file and start using it. In a moment, we're going to create a new company file right here. But notice the sample files. There's a product-based and a service-based. If you don't know how to do something or you're not sure how to set something up in QuickBooks, open one of these sample files and see how they did it. Now we're going to actually create our new company file, so we'll click on that. And notice that there's a couple of options before you get started. They have one that says Start Setup. And they used to actually have an option right next to it that said it was the suggested way to start. I don't suggest this because it will ask you two or three questions and then it says it's set up and it's really not. So it's better for you to take a little bit more time and go down to other options and use this advanced setup that we're going to do here in a second. Now before I click on that, I just want to kind of notice the other options here. One is to open an existing file. The other is to convert some Quicken data. So Quicken basically is into its home version of QuickBooks and a lot of times they, even though they make a business edition for it, it's not near as robust and as good as QuickBooks is. So a lot of people actually convert their Quicken data into QuickBooks. Also there are other accounting packages out there. You do have the ability to convert some of that data into QuickBooks as well. And a brand new option is to set this up on behalf of someone else. That's going to give you limited options once you get into this particular company file. But let's go ahead and start with the advanced setup. Okay, so on this first screen it asks you to enter your company information. Now notice the only thing you have to put here is the company name. See the little asterisk? But you do want to fill in as much of this as possible because this is the information that will pull when you decide to send out correspondence to customers and or vendors. So I'm going to go ahead and put our company name in here. I'm just making up this company, ABC Services. Notice if I tab through it, it'll bring that same name down as the legal name. And you don't need to change that unless it happens to be different. The next field asks you to put in your tax ID number. QuickBooks doesn't really need this information at this point unless you're going to use their payroll service, which we'll talk about in a later module. But other than that, it really doesn't need this. So unless you want to fill it in, you don't really have to. Now we'll go down and put in a street address. I'll just put in a mailing address here. And we'll go ahead and put in a city and a state. And again, I'm just making this up. And you would also go down and put a phone, fax, email, and website. Now keep in mind that if you make a mistake when you're setting this up or later you want to edit the information, very easy to do. I'm going to be showing you that shortly. So go ahead and click Next when you're done. And then it will ask you to select your industry. Now you want to pick an industry that's close to what you do. There's no wrong answer here, okay? So based on how you answer the question, starting with this one, it's going to create a generic, what we call a chart of accounts at the end. And I'll tell you what that is when we get there shortly. But if you look down this list, you'll see that if you happen to be a church or you happen to be in construction, engineering, there's real estate, there's insurance, there's just all kinds of different industries here. Now at the very bottom, you can find a general product base or service based business. So again, you can pick any one you want. There's no wrong answer here. 
Now I'm going to click Next and it should take me to how is your company organized. Now don't get hung up on this screen, okay? The reason it's asking you how your company is organized is this. You may be someone who does your own taxes for your business. Now I don't suggest you do that. I always suggest you have an accountant. But if you do your own taxes, you would be using some software like TurboTax is a real popular one, for example. And in TurboTax, it has to know which line item to pull different items onto for your tax purposes. What's going to happen is if you pick any of these, then you're going to come to different screens where it will ask you which tax line on your tax form would you like to put this on. You're not going to have a clue because you don't do taxes. Don't get hung up on that. Just pick other or none at the bottom. That way your accountant is going to know where to put things and this way then you won't be worried about it when you see those different options there. So I'm going to pick other or none and I'm going to click next. This screen asks for the first month of your fiscal year so it defaults to January so unless it happens to be something else then you don't need to change it. Now let's talk about your passwords for a minute. We are going to talk in a later module about setting up the users and that's where passwords come into play. What happens in QuickBooks is when you first purchase it, you're going to be able to set up five users. Even if you have a single user license, you can set up five users. You as the administrator will be one of the users. What this allows you to do is whenever you log into your QuickBooks file, it will ask you to put in your username and password before you can move on. And this is a very highly suggested option. Please, please, please set these up. Right now, I'm not going to set one up. We'll talk about that later, and then you'll see how to set that up. Now I'm going to click Next, and it's going to go to the Save screen. And basically, you can save your file and call it anything you want. Now it's going to bring in the name of whatever you called your file automatically. Just kind of know where you're saving it and what you've called it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Save over here, and it's going to create my new company file. Now it's going to take just a couple of seconds to do this, and what you're going to see is you're going to see icons appear on your home screen. You're going to start seeing some of your screen set up in the background. And I can start seeing some of it back there. See that? And just a second, it's going to take me to the next actual option for the interview. Now, real quick, I'll kind of show you. Looking back here, you can see there's your new company name, and some of your options are set up already. Now, we're not ready to leave the interview yet, so let's go ahead and finish this. So what you're going to notice now is we're getting into the customizing section of QuickBooks. So I'm going to click next at the bottom and it says what do you sell? Services, products, or both? Now just so you'll know from now on based on how you answer the questions it's going to turn icons on or off on your screen. That's all this is doing. So if you decide that you pick services now and later you want to sell products you can always change it. So let's just say that I pick both and I click next at the bottom. It will then ask me if I charge sales tax and again we're not setting up the tax we're just turning the options on yes or no. So I'll just say yes here. Now it's asking me would I like to create estimates in QuickBooks. Now let me tell you what estimates are. Estimates allow you to create a quote or a bid for a particular job. Construction is a great example. If I'd like to have my kitchen remodeled, I'm going to ask my contractor to give me a quote or an estimate on the job. And that's all this is. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. Now it's asking me about using statements in QuickBooks. Now statements go out to customers at the end of the month. And typically it will have a starting balance any transactions that occurred during that month and then it'll have an ending balance. It's not something you have to do but it is an option if you'd like to send out statements. So I'll just say yes here. Now progress invoicing. If it were me I would have put this question right behind the estimate question because what progress invoicing allows you to do is based on your estimate you can invoice your customer for a portion of that estimate, certain items on that estimate, so if you do estimate jobs, you do want progress invoicing. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next here. 
Now let's go ahead and stop this video here because we've got a second part to this. So why don't you guys join me in the next video where we kind of finish creating our company file. Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you need additional QuickBooks Pro training to help you effectively manage your small business, check out our complete training courses for QuickBooks Pro. Click the Learn More button on the left, and I'll see you next week with additional videos.